Hello friends, happy Saturday, my name is Duke, this is Ziggurat, this game is awesome, I picked this up about a week ago, this is a uh, roguelike like, action roguelike, uh, I recently learned a new term for this kind of game, which I'm quite fond of, and that's a procedural death labyrinth, uh, hello to Kasha in the chat. No, speaking of chat, I should probably sync this baby up. Uh, oh wait, my mouse cursor is trapped in the game. Oh well, that'll be fine. <clears throat> I can just go by, uh, by Kasha and Private Steve's message because it makes a beep and I can just sync it up that way. Anyway, I'm leaving it here on, at the title screen for a few seconds just to see if it plays the, the intro. I guess it won't. Uh, the only way to watch the intro that I can tell is to start up the game, but I had to I had to start it up before the stream started to get everything set up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, this is definitely my kind of game. Costs uh, a procedural death labyrinth. Uh, for more information, go to proceduraldeathlabyrinth.com, uh, and also a really snazzy looking logo. Anyway, th the premise for this game is you're a wizard, and uh, part of your wizard training is that you have to pass a test and get to the end of the ziggurat and succeed. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, I'm going to start a new game here. Alright, so this is the uh, character you started with, Argo, the apprentice. He is a totally ordinary person. You know, standard stats. Uh, one of the earliest characters I unlocked was Kraz, and she's probably one of my favorite characters, um, so I'm going to start a game with her. So far I've only played the game on normal. Uh, from what I understand, easy is like you don't unlock stuff as quickly, or you don't unlock certain things at all. I'm not, not really sure how that works, but I've, I've found that normal is pretty much the perfect level challenge for me. I haven't beaten the game on normal yet, I've come very close, uh, but after I do beat the game on normal, there's also hard and endless. And I'm not really sure what's up with those difficulty levels. A um, bunch of different characters you can play. Basically, all it affects is your starting items and your starting stats. Um, this is a first-person shooter. This game is very similar in style to a game like Hexic uh, or uh, Hexen or Heretic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kraz is a lady. She just has a shaved head. Uh, yeah, that's a her. <clears throat> So yeah, let's uh, go ahead and start this up. There are five levels. Uh, you start off as in all games of this type, uh, in a completely randomly generated dungeon. Uh, you have four different weapon types, and there's a weapon at the beginning of each floor, at least on normal. I don't know how it is on the other difficulty modes. Your base weapon, which you always have, is your wand. Your wand has regenerating mana, and Kraz's wand in particular has a much higher uh, fire rate and much faster mana regeneration than the default character. And you can take a look at my starting abilities by uh, hitting U. So as you can see, I have level 5 wand mastery, level 5 wand link, increase my mana regeneration. Yeah, see, that's how I know it's, it's a lady. Uh, has decided to keep her wand balanced without almost any differences to an apprentice's wand, except for her perks. And I just picked up a spell book, Viper Fangs, or four poisonous projectiles in a wide area. So, uh, the, the four weapon types are the wand, the spell book, and the third slot is for a staff, and the fourth slot is for a, a alchemic weapon, which can take the form of, so far, a gun or a grenade. I'm not sure if there are other if there are other types of weapons for that slot. But, uh, yeah, let, let's let's get rolling here. Uh, this game's pretty tough. Uh, I have made it to the final boss a couple times. I've come really close to killing him. Oh, and the of course the first room I go into is a challenge room. Uh, this room doesn't have any monsters. All it has is a series of challenges. And at the end of the challenges is a chest containing one or multiple items. And this is one of the easier ones, actually, so there's some of the more difficult ones that I won't attempt to do, especially if I'm running low on health. 
because first person platforming is kind of a nightmare. All right, got a new perk, thick skin. That's a that's a good one to get right off the bat. Just a very basic. Uh, oh crap! I have to jump back too. Usually these these challenge rooms have a separate path. But once you get to the end of the room, it makes it easier to get back. But uh, in this instance, I have to actually do this part again. Oh god. I knew that was gonna happen. Shit. Alright, well, that could have been worse. We got some barrels to blow up here. You can also blow up the barrels by walking into them, but uh, I don't recommend it because they often contain a poisonous substance. Oh cool, found a health potion. That's nice. Barrels occasionally contain items. Not very often. Uh, oh hey, what's up, uh, DML190? Is the voice of my character different depending on the character sex? Yes, uh, so far every character seems to have a pretty uh, unique voice, but I mean, they don't actually say anything, it's just grunts and, uh, well, pretty much just grunts. Alright, so, we get into the meat and, meat and potatoes of the game, the monsters. Uh, this game plays a lot like, uh... You know, big arena sh shooters like, uh, well, I, I guess you can make comparisons to Doom. Uh, I would compare it to like a Serious Sam or a Painkiller kind of game, in that uh, the focus of the game is on surrounding you with monsters. And uh, I mean, they don't really have AI other than move towards you and attack. So the challenge of the game comes in negotiating the rooms full of full of monsters. Uh, you don't have to like take cover or outsmart them or anything. It's very, very old school style uh, shooter. Uh, hello, Scoutlord98. I say you're the Lost Vikings Let's Play. Uh, thanks, I think. I say that too. All the time. Really hoping I don't get a lot of slowdown. Uh, I don't normally stream games that are like... 3D, I guess. Uh, a lot of the games I stream are kind of lo-fi, comparatively, and uh, this game looks really nice, and it also plays really well on my few, few years old computer. Uh, however, I do get a lot of slowdown, especially in some of the later levels, uh, when there's just so much shit on the screen, so many projectiles flying at you, and I'm hoping streaming doesn't make that worse. Yeah, exactly, because Serious Sam is probably what I would compare this game to the most. I never actually played Painkiller, but I played a bit of Serious Sam. Alright, so I collected enough experience gems to go up a level. So when that happens, you hit you, and you get two perks to choose from. There are abilities you can get that give you more perks to choose from. Uh, so here I can increase my health limit, or I can get another level of thick skin. Now, this character starts out at, at 100 health. There are characters that start out much weaker. Um, and 100 is it's it's pretty manageable. Uh, since I already have a level with thick skin, I'm going to take level 2 of that perk. And I should have mentioned that the experience gems do disappear if you don't pick them up. Oops. If you don't pick them up quickly enough. So there's a lot of like risk versus reward management of... Uh, you know, you want to run out and get those experience gems, but sometimes you gotta wait until it's safe. Uh, so what I just picked up is the portal key. Uh, once you pick that up, you can fight the bo the boss of the level you're on. Oh, also I should be looking for secret doors. Uh, much like the Binding of Isaac, well, much like the original Binding of Isaac, I guess, there is one secret door on every level. At least so far that seems to be the case. And you can tell where it is because of cracks in uh, a wall. And uh, on some of the levels, the uh, the wall texture, it's a little harder to see, that, see the, the cracks than on others. But on this one, the secret should be pretty obvious, so hopefully I don't miss it. Oh, you saw my Lost Vikings LP. Thank you. Oh, I can only use my wand. Okay, I, have, I haven't actually seen this kind of room yet. I have been mostly using my wand. So uh, this shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, I, I should show off the spell book I have, though. I just realized I haven't done that yet. So yeah, if uh, if I don't pick those up quickly enough, 
they will disappear. Shit. And uh, Kraz's wand is pretty accurate. You, you can hit the enemies from pretty far away. Uh, there is a little bit of, uh, of drift on it, though. And you, you... Oh, shit. I don't like carrots. I mean, I like eating carrots. Or I mean, I don't love them or anything. They're okay. But carrots in this game are especially annoying. Oh, and also, you can see enemies through walls. Uh, this is just an, a thing that's that you always have the ability to do. You can turn this off in the options. I like having it. It's not too much of a... Uh, shit. It's not too much of a of a help, but it can make it easier. You know, when there's one enemy left on the floor and you're just having a hard time finding it, that can be uh, that can be useful. Yeah, there is a... Uh, a character you can unlock by killing enough carrots and I'm not sure if I've unlocked that character or not. One of the few things I don't really like about this game is that it doesn't really make clear make clear what you have to do to unlock things. Well with characters uh, with the characters it tells you what you have to do but like if you go into the perks uh, part shit part of the menu that shows all of the perks you've unlocked the one oh my god okay let's uh, use some spellbook this is why carrots are bad they swarm you but yeah you can see uh, all of the perks you've unlocked but the ones you haven't unlocked it doesn't tell you what you have to do to get them it just says keep playing to unlock this and it seems to be pretty arbitrary like after every run uh, usually I get a couple of perks unlocking even if I don't really do that well so it might just be based on the number of deaths or the number the number of times you die uh, which kind of sucks because I like feeling like I'm accomplishing something something like uh, like in Rogue Legacy for example I really like the persistent leveling up that you do uh, because you know it feels like you earn those perks and in this game it doesn't always really feel like the unlocks are something that you, uh, you know, that you brought about. Alright, so I can restore half my max health points, which I absolutely don't need, or I can get telekinetic, attract items from a further distance. This is one of the perks that makes it a little easier to pick up those, uh, those experience gems before they disappear. And there's a map you can bring up. Alright, these fungus creatures, they fire, uh, oh god, they fire projectiles that can kind of seek you out, but unlike most of the projectiles, you can actually destroy them. So I, I recommend using the wand against the fungus creatures because, uh, it's a lot easier, or you have the accuracy you need to actually hit the projectile. Uh-oh. Hey, yeah, I can watch the stream, but oddly the chat is not working. Oh, sorry to hear that, Sarah, but... Thanks for, uh, thanks for popping in. Seems like the Twitch stream is working okay, which is good. I wonder how many people are having issues with the chat, though. Alright, that room went pretty well. What other games have Karis as, en as enemies? Um, I can't think of any. Uh, I mean, Wiz and Liz has a carrot character that you can collect to cast spells. I guess it's not really a character, but it has a face, so close enough. Yeah, I can't, I can't think of any, uh... Ooh, I can't think of any games where you fight carrots besides this. One of the uh, loading screen tips says, a few carrots were harmed in the making of this game. Oh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> oh, so this is the boss room. Uh, you can actually... If, if you're not ready to go to the boss yet, you can... Wait, is this? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's a skull icon on the map. For some reason... Oh, it wasn't showing up on the mini-map a second ago. But yeah, you can tell when you're about to fight the boss. So if you're not ready, you can uh, go look around, get some more experience and stuff. I'm probably ready. I have full mana for the only weapon I have. Uh, oh, there are carrots and evil carrots and Banjo-Kazooie, apparently. 
I played the... This guy's not too bad. I played the Xbox Live Arcade remake of the first Banjo-Kazooie Banjo game, and uh, I didn't really like it that much. Oh god. Shit. King Blob is the uh, the bullet hell boss, apparently. Once you kill the boss, all of the enemies th that he spawned died, so you don't have to worry about them killing you. Alright, I got full health. He dropped enough potions for me to, uh, to heal, and I leveled up. Alright, sweet! Another level with thick skin. I don't think I've ever had more than two of these before. Aw oh, man, Koss is having issues with the stream too. It's it's a crapshoot with Twitch. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going on with with the chat. Sorry, sir. Um. <clears throat> so yeah, that was a pretty successful room. There's one uh, activated item you can get. You can get an amulet. Uh, I haven't found any yet this run, but the amulets are pretty useful. And other than that, it's pretty minimal as far as uh, as far as inventory and stuff goes. You have your four weapons and you have your amulet. That's it. Oh, occasionally you'll find these scrolls that have a bit of game lore, quote unquote. But more importantly, they also give you experience. So always pick up the scrolls. <clears throat> oh hey, I got a Chivo, erudite. Even a skilled and powerful wizard starts doubting his abilities after surviving many battles. It is hard to remain calm when you've witnessed too many things you would rather forget. That would explain why the most experienced wizards of the order refuse to talk about it when a young student seeks out words of wisdom. It's not easy to talk about an experience whose wounds have not healed yet. And maybe they never will. So yeah, there's a very loose story building up when you, uh, when you collect the scrolls, it's not really a story, it's just more uh, more information about the game world, I guess. Uh, this game was made by M Milkstone Studios, which uh, I looked them up, They're, they are a Spanish developer. And uh, most of the text in the game is pretty good, the translation is fine. Uh, some, some of the uh, little bits of lore and stuff have some, a little bit of broken English, but it's okay. This is not exactly the kind of game I would play for the lore. And I'm just looking around to see if I can find the entrance to the secret room. Uh, the secret room always has one perk in it. A free perk. So, very much in your best interest to find it if you can. Uh, if I missed it and anyone noticed it, uh, please let me know. Wait, is this it? No. See, sometimes the, uh, the cracks can be a little difficult to see. Oh, man, I hope it's... I hope it's not in this room. I didn't even think to check. Crap. It might be over there. Hopefully I don't fall in the lava again on the way back. But it feels like I checked every other room, so... Oh god. I thought I could make that jump. I, sh I should have dashed. Alright, well I'm not trying that again. So if the secret room's over there, then I guess it can just stay there. What are my planned for future Let's Play? Um, well, uh, I want to play a bunch more of this. Uh, I want to play more of The Binding of Isaac. I want to finish the uh, Super Mario Land series I started. I played through Super Mario Land 1 through, uh, one through 3. Well, the the first three games in the series, and I definitely want to play more of them. All right, let's just check this room again. I, I don't think I checked this room very. Oh, here it is, cracked wall, which means I just tried to get across that lava pit for nothing. Free perk, potions give you more health. I'll take it. And also, the secret rooms usually have a little bit of info about one of the developer's previous games, much like Rogue Legacy. A game where you set your workmates on fire, released on 2011. Despite having a good visual design, the game ended up being... Hey, I was reading that. 
yeah, it's a set amount of time to read that text. You can't skip past it, and you can't uh, keep it on the screen longer. And yeah, that's the only place where the English has been a little bit off. For all the scrolls and stuff, it's mostly fine. Alright, and that's level one. Yep, yeah, that's one of my patented uh, Duke catchphrases, Kasha. Add that to the fan wiki. Oh yeah, your, your crosshair color indicates the remaining health of a targeted enemy, from green to red. Ever thought of doing an LP of the original Taz game for the Genesis? Uh, no, I, the only reason I did Taz and Escape from Mars is because I played that game as a kid, and I never played any of the other Taz games. I've actually never gotten this weapon before. I think I unlocked it recently. Did I mention the all-fire modes? Every weapon also has an all-fire mode. This is the all-fire mode for the wand. Just kind of a, a shotgun spread, as opposed to a, a steady stream. This is my uh, fang spellbook. That's the alt-fire. And then the staff has normal shot. Very slow. I'm holding down the button, and that's... Oops! I ran out of staff mana. That can happen when you play as Kraz. She has a very small mana pool for everything but the wand. Uh, yeah, just 65 mana. Let's see what that staff does, since I've never gotten it before. Uh, single shot that requires accuracy and skill to be effective. High chance of stunning enemies. Oh, so it's like the real gun of the game, sort of. Very, uh... Very long cooldown, I'm assuming... I'm, Assuming the damage is pretty good, I'm not sure. How many levels in total? On normal mode, there are five levels. And I've made it to the final boss of level five a few times. And uh, I haven't beaten him yet. The characters aren't actually as bad as I made them out to be. I mean, they don't have projectiles, so you pretty much just have to... Uh, crap. Not do what I'm doing. Not... Not let yourself get sworn by them. And, like I said, the uh, AI is not much to write home about, so they pretty much just run straight at you and don't, uh, don't do anything clever. Right. Usually, enemies will spawn into a room as you're, uh, as you're fighting, which can be really frustrating if you're focusing on taking out the enemies new enemies spawn in behind you you don't hear them and suddenly you start taking damage from behind from enemies you didn't even realize were there I guess what you have to do is just be sort of more spatially aware of your surroundings not just what's in front of you yeah that does suck cost that you have to pick up the XP orbs before they disappear um, there is a perk that lets them that makes them stay in place longer. Uh, and at first I really didn't like that. I, I didn't like that you have to choose basically between survival and leveling up in a lot of cases. But as I got better at the game, I'm sort of okay with it now. Uh, I mean, it makes it more exciting, you know. Risking, uh, uh, let's try out my staff. Oh. My mana is still pretty low. Oh. I got exactly one shot with the staff before I ran out of mana. Kraz is a very wand-focused character. She, uh... I mean, her other mana pools... Oh, shit. Her other mana pools start out low, and unless you're lucky, they don't go up. I mean, yeah, you can get perks that increase your mana pools, but, uh... You're not guaranteed to get them. There is a perk that, uh... makes it so other colors of mana can refill other meters. So basically, like, once I pick up a blue, a blue, or once my blue meter is full, if I picked up that blue one, it would transfer over to my green one, since my green one is empty. Uh, hello, Micros, Micros 55? Micros? The orange meter is full on the right. How come you ran out? The orange meter is for the fourth weapon slot, the uh, alchemic weapon, which I don't have yet. The green is the mana. Or this, the staff mana. I know it's confusing because the staff is orange and it looks like it should be using the orange mana. 
but the green mana bar is for your staff. Alright, recover a small amount of mana at the beginning of each battle. Could be helpful, um, but I think I'm going to go with Thick Skin. Uh, these these perks that have the number can level, they can go up to level 5, and uh, I've never had level 5 of Thick Skin. I have a feeling it'll be pretty damn useful. And like I said, Kraz is a very wand-heavy character. Uh, oh shit. So, I'm not too worried about, uh, about, about my other weapons. I hate these things. Shit! Either you can't hurt them when they're closed, or they take a very small amount of damage when they're closed. I can't tell. I mean, it looked like I killed that thing while it was closed, so I think it's just, uh... I think I just do much less damage to them in that form. Uh, your mana for your wand regenerates automatically. For every other weapon, you have to pick up mana. Alright. This is the floor with really difficult to see secret rooms. The uh, the textures of, of these walls are already pretty cracked, so a few, other, a few more cracks isn't always noticeable. So I, I tend to kind of fire a few shots at walls just to make absolutely sure because if it is a secret door, you can see little pieces of the door flying off. Oh, well I could fight the boss already. Uh, I have full mana for my spell book. I kind of like to, to charge my staff up a little bit. So I'm going to hold off on the boss for now. I mean, the sound from when enemies spawn in is pretty distinctive, so theoretically, you should know when you need to uh, when you need to look around you. A lot of circle strafing in this game. It's uh, kind of the way Painkiller and Serious Sam are as well. Also, uh, another recent game I liked a lot was uh, Hard Reset, which is a first-person shooter from the people who made the Shadow Warrior reboot. It came out a few years ago. Very fun, old-school style shooter. Lots of stuff on the screen. Oh, uh, so th these boxes pop up occasionally, and uh, you, you always get goodies from them. Appa occasionally they'll sc spawn enemies in on you as well. Hey! Oh, a bunch of mana I don't need. That's disappointing. You can also get like, amulets and weapons and perks and whatever else from those, but uh... Just gave me some mana. Alright, we're ready to go. Up here. Oh, this is the starting room. Just double check some of these walls, okay. And there are elite versions of the enemies. Um, you can see them, uh, they glow. And they have, uh, some of them are faster, some of them are just stronger, uh, some of them have special effects. Occasionally you'll find an invisible version of, of enemies, which, uh, is quite a pain in the ass to deal with. Shit! Oh. I keep trying to fire my wand while dashing, and that doesn't work. God, these guys are tough. The big red guys are. Shit. Ah, I took way too much damage on that. I'm about to level up though. Leveling up restores a little bit of your health. It doesn't fully heal you or anything, but it's nice. Wait, okay, see, this is a secret door. And it's very hard to tell with uh, with these wall textures, but uh, you can see a little, little chip fly flying off when you shoot it, so that's how you know. If I didn't shoot it, I probably wouldn't have figured it out. Oh, this is a very useful perk. Recover a small amount of health at the beginning of each battle. Having, having level 5 of this is awesome. And this one doesn't have info on the developer's previous games. It's just a nice portrait of one of the enemies. All 
Right. This is the only place I need to go, right? Yeah. And we gotta watch out for the, uh, the seeking projectiles from these mushrooms. Whoa! Oh, that's weird. I was, like, walking along the ridge of that wall. Never done that before. Oh, level up real quick. Yes, level 5 ethics again. Awesome. One of my main strategies is, uh, kind of running from one end of the room to the other. Just getting them all to focus on that side of the room. Oh, see? This guy just spawned in. Messing up my side of the room strategy. And the enemies are so slow, you know, it takes them forever to get back to the other side, so you have a chance to, to try to pick them off from a distance. Shit. God damn it. I hate the way these things slide. It's obnoxious. Eat staff. Oh, I missed. Eh, doesn't seem to do a ton of damage. Well, I guess it's pretty good. See what the old fire does. Oh, never mind. Wow, that uh, must use a lot of mana. Oh, hey, what's up, Magactu? Oh, hey, what's up, uh, sister? Yeah, I was playing Apple II games. I want to play more Apple II games, by the way. I didn't get through, you know, a fraction of what I had, what I had intended to look at. It was a fun stream. I like looking at weird old games. Alright, well, I was going to try to get my staff mana up before I fought the boss, but it looks like I kind of blew that, so... Let's just go fight the boss. Get my spellbook out. Alright, this guy's kind of annoying, but uh, hopefully I should be powerful enough to take him on. He does this uh, this attack that you have to jump to avoid getting hit by. And it's not that hard to dodge, except when you have dozens of enemies swarming around you as well. You kind of have to, to watch a lot of stuff and make sure you jump that at the same time. Looks like it's back to the old trusty wand. See, that's why I like Kraz a whole lot. Because even when you run out of uh, mana, you still have an awesome weapon to use. With some of the other characters, the wand can be pretty useless late in the game. Just because it's so underpowered. I think if you're far enough away when he does the ring, you don't have to jump. There is like a uh, an effective range on that. Got him. Nice. So my usual strategy with bosses that spawn, well, I guess they all spawn minions, but there are also rooms where there are like monster generators that you have to destroy or else they keep spawning enemies. And my usual strategy for th for those situations is to just focus on the thing doing the spawning. Because if you try to kill the monsters that are being spawned, not only are you wasting resources, uh, if you're using your, your, other, your other weapons that use mana, if it just seems like they spawn the enemies in just as fast as you, as you can kill them. So best to just kind of dodge them and just focus on the thing doing the spawning. Exactly, cost. This game is a uh, game is empowering for wizards. I mean, usually wizards are just kind of the weaklings. You know, they stay at the back of the party. You know, they they fire some high power spells, but you know, if you touch them. If they get hit by a stiff breeze, they just fall over. In this game, wizards are badass. This is a very pro wizard game. Alright. So, this is the alchemical weapon. I got a fire weaver bomb. 
which is pretty cool. I've gotten this thing before. I like it. It's very slow, but it has a wide area of effect. And you can hit yourself with the splash damage too, which you kind of have to watch out for. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and show this off. I haven't gotten a ton of flying enemies in this playthrough, which is kind of surprising. Usually, it's nothing but flying enemies. All right, what started that fire? Hope it's not what I think it is. Oh, these things. Okay. Well, speak of the devil. Shit. I feel like I'm getting a little bit slow down already because I'm streaming, which is kind of a bummer. I might want to go in and uh, knock some of the uh, shit, some of the fancy graphic settings down a little bit. Oh, that's a blue one. That's nasty. All right. See what the staff can do now that I have fully charged mana. All right, that's the all fire. All right. Well, that was pretty good. Kill that thing in a couple hits. God, it's slow though, and it, and it uses a whole bunch of mana. See, sometimes I feel like I'm dodging and I'm still getting hit, and I just don't know what the hell's hitting me. What the hell? Is there something behind me? Or. Oh, I guess I was just getting hit by like the area of effect on those uh, on those electric blasts. That sucks. All right, well let's see what's over here. Ah, oh, what the? Doesn't seem like a good weapon for this kind of enemy. Yeah, I, th I think I'm just. It, it feels like I'm dodging those, but I'm still getting hit by the splash damage, which is a bummer. Oh, that was unpleasant. By the way, those chalices... Ooh, potion. Get those chalices that are dropping are just points. They don't actually do anything. Video keeps buffering, says Cistern. Well, that, that sucks. Is it buffering for anyone else? Just so, I can always go in and reduce the quality of the stream. Hate to have to do that. But uh, sometimes it's necessary. Mana gems give you more magic energy. Well, this is a very one-focused build, so I think I'm just going to stick with Druid, since I already have a level on that. Get even more of a bonus from healing potions. I have to say, having a level 5 in thick skin is awesome. I took way less damage in that fight than I should have. Uh, hold on a sec. Crap. You can't reduce the quality on your stream, the button's missing. No, I meant, uh my actual stream settings i can i can lower the bitrate a little bit uh not buffered for dml for for a while that's good uh okay so yeah sorry to anyone uh getting quality issues with the stream blame twitch don't blame me oh hey portal key what oh Bullshit. That's never happened before. Usually, usually the portal key rooms are completely safe. I don't think I've ever seen a trap in a portal key room. That was very sneaky. Used to buffer at the start of the stream, now it's fine for Gasa. Okay. Yeah, it'd be nice if non-Twitch partners could get the, the quality setting options. But, uh... I guess that would be... Oh, God. Okay, so... Those yellow things means that there's shit means that there's a shaman in the room. And the shaman summons enemies. So you have you have to take them out first. Let's get my spellbook out here. Actually let's get my grenades out. Do a little splash damage on these suckers. Oh, and these are the blobs that split into smaller blobs. I hate those things. And you can always tell if there's a sh if there's a shaman in the room if if you don't see the uh, the yellow projectiles if the enemies aren't dropping experience gems that means that they were summoned in by a shaman so if you if you kill enemies and they don't drop gems then uh, then you know you have a problem okay I think I killed both of the shaman or all of the shaman that were in the room so now I can focus on his minions yeah see see how they're not dropping anything that's how you know. That they were summoned. Alright, 
keep an eye out for secret doors. Don't see any. They're they're pretty easy to see on this level. Uh, so I'm not gonna go around shooting the walls like I did on the last level. Oh, not gonna get me again, spikes. Oh yeah, you can knock down these piles of books. You never find items in them or anything, but it's fun. There is a perk you can get called Wrecking Ball that makes it so you, you get health back every time you destroy stuff, which is a that's a pretty fun one. Oh, okay, so here's the obelisk I was talking about. And with the obelisk, what you want to do is get as close as possible and hit it with as many projectiles as possible because they take quite a while to take down. So I like to get right up on them and just... If I, if I have something that shoots multiple projectiles. And like I said, they're going to keep spawning stuff in until they're destroyed. So... You gotta focus on them, no matter how many how many monsters are around you, which kind of sucks. I, I probably I probably be better off with my wand actually, since I have such a high fire rate, and and my book fires so slowly. All right, so the obelisk health bar is half down, which means there's only one more to go. That's good. Sometimes you get a room with four obelisks and and, and it sucks. I don't know if you can actually take cover bomb. No, it doesn't look like it. Well, that might have just been splash damage, though. Oh god, my health is dangerously low. Alright, so let's, uh... I think I forgot to pick up the stuff that Obelisk dropped. That wasn't smart. So let's try to... kite these enemies to the other side of the room. So I can take out that Obelisk without... Shit. Oh my god, my health is so low. What are you doing, Duke? Hopefully this thing drops some potions. Uh, no, but I leveled up. That's almost as good. Reveal important locations on the map for all levels. I've never gotten this one before. I could reduce my mana usage for spells. Summon enemies may have dropped dead after beating the shaman like they did with the boss. Unfortunately, no. And uh, same with the obelisk. Even after the obelisk is destroyed, you still have to take out all of the, uh, all of the summons. Yeah, I'll get spell proficiency. I mean, knowing the map data doesn't really help that much. I mean, I guess it would be useful to know where the secret room is, but uh, they're usually pretty easy to find anyway. Shit. Alright, good. Lots of potions dropping. That's quite fortunate. Holy crap. Oh man, there's a, uh, there's a fire breather over here. I hate these things. Oh god. Yes, please keep dropping health potions. By the way, these flying skull things are actually called lost souls. Which is what the flying skull things in Doom are called. I'm now realizing how interconnected RPGs are. Flying, exploding heads, etc. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that is a pretty common trope. Alright, my, my health isn't too bad. That was a tough room, but uh, I came out no worse for the wear. Alright, just a quick look around the perimeter to see if there are any secret doors. Would I care to explain for you, please? Uh, sure, if you have any questions, just let me know. I'll explain- oh god! I'll explain anything you're not getting. Oh god. These guys suck. The uh, Their flaming projectile thing has quite a long range on it. And there's one in every corner of the room, so no, no safe spot to get to while I pick them off. I can get behind that guy though. That's a pretty safe spot. Not quite bright enough to turn around. Shit. So okay, this thing this staff isn't quite the awesome real gun I thought it was, but uh Yeah, it's okay. There are definitely better staffs than this. 
or staves. Sometimes they spell staves or staves. S T A V E S. I, I guess it's pronounced staves. I don't know. Maybe it's staves. Whoa, man. Yeah, not, not a big fan of the staff compared to some of the other staffs. Is there any classes like melee or anything? Uh, I mean, there are different classes. The only thing the different classes do is, well, it affects the amount of health and, and mana you start with for the various weapons, and it affects your starting perks. And when you first start playing the game, there's only one class and he doesn't have any perks or anything. Hold on, I'm gonna... I totally can just walk around. Hmm. Yeah, if I'm in a room, if I'm in a room full of like carrots or something, something enemies without uh, projectiles, I can totally just kind of stand up here and just pick them off. But yeah, there's no melee class. Uh, every character in this game is a wizard, so no no melee weapons or anything. At least not yet. I mean, there might be a melee weapon that I haven't unlocked yet. But that would be kind of weird. I'm not sure how it would work. It'd be kind of cool though if like one of the alchemical weapons you can get is like a big sledgehammer or something. That'd be awesome. All right. I don't know why I thought of a sledgehammer. I guess it's just a it's a wizardy seeming weapon. Because you know a wizard with a, an edge weapon like a sword that would just be weird. Or like a warhammer or maybe a mace. It'd be pretty cool. Oh god, there's one right above me. Run! Trying to collect these managens without dying. Shit. Man, this slowdown's a bummer. I might have to, uh... To go in and mess with some of the settings. I mean, a lot of the look of this game, you know, it looks good mostly because of the art style. It's not like a really, like, the graphic settings aren't intense or anything, so. I thought I saw a potion. I might have picked it up. Sword is easier to handle by a weak person than a warhammer. Yeah, but, I mean, D&D kind of set in stone that wizards can't use edge weapons. Just kind of the way it always is. Alright, let's uh, turn the quality down to low, I guess. Or maybe very low, see if that helps. Turn off anti-aliasing. I mean, when I'm, when I'm not streaming, I can play it at... Wait, why does it still say... Is it rendering at 1080p in a 720 window? That'd be weird. Alright, hopefully this doesn't mess the stream up. Let's try going low and uh, see see how this does. Uh, okay, the stream appears to still be working. Yeah, if you die, that's it. It's, uh, I mean, there is persistence. Your perks, whatever perks you unlock are there forever. But yeah, you have to start a new run from the beginning of the dungeon. Man, I hope it wasn't rendering this in 1080p. That would be... That would be really dumb. Alright, so this doesn't look that much worse. Okay, so this is a shrine room. Uh, there is a shrine where you don't offer anything, there's a shrine where you can offer health, and there's a shrine where you can offer mana. And weirdly enough, you can do all three of these. It doesn't make you pick, so... Reduce spell mana usage, that's nice. Do I want to give up 34 health? Yeah, I'm doing okay. Enemy drop rate is increased. I don't, I don't like the ones that are just for one combat. Seems like kind of a waste. And... Reduce staff mana usage. Nice. So, you can get a Divine Punishment from these, and, uh... That's a bummer. There's also Divine Indifference, where, like, it raises one stat, but lowers another stat. Stuff like that. Oh! Here's a secret wall. Nice. Yeah, it, it doesn't make much sense, cost, but there's a lot of stuff about D&D that doesn't make much sense. Increase enemy drop rate, nice. 
Released in 2013, after the su success of White Noise, we decided to, to improve the game, adding more scenarios, selectable characters, and a cooperative mode for players maintaining the thrill. Damn it. I tried, guys. Uh, so every time you level up, you pick a perk, and it gives you two random perks. After you die, there are perks that you unlock, and once you unlock them, you have the chance to get them when you level up. Or, or from a secret room or anything else that gives you a perk. Every apprentice gets anxious when they start to think about where their mortal souls will go, knowing that as soon as you're born, you're bound to be dead. Kind of an awkward way to phrase that, but okay. But did anyone ever think about the creatures that are mercilessly crushed before their very own eyes? These creatures enslaved with a dark sign exist merely for you to measure your own strength. Nobody thinks about them. Who is to say that the corrupted soul of a banshee or a mandrake aren't trapped in these forgotten walls for all eternity? Who knows if these creatures weren't human beings in their previous existence? It really makes you think. Maybe you're the real monster. Over a small- oh. I had the option to get this and I passed it up. Yeah, I want more, more health from potions. A lot of these, a lot of the pit hallways. Alright, these guys suck. Especially there's a lot of them. Because if there's a bunch of these things throwing fire at you, it can slow my computer down to a crawl. Which will probably be even worse now that I'm streaming. And sad to say that lowering all those quality settings didn't seem to help the frame rate that much. It still seems pretty dodgy. But, uh, I mean, it's okay. It's still playable. Shit. No, not that one. That one. Not, I'm not getting very many uh, wide area of effect type weapons. I might try dropping the settings down to very low and see if that helps anymore. I mean, like I was saying, when I'm playing, when I'm not streaming, I play this 1080p, 60 frames per second, no problem. Except in situations like that where there are a ton of these guys. But I, th I think that that'll slow you down no matter how good your computer is. This game makes you question your humanity. Well, I mean, is being a human really that great? I mean, when you really think about it. What was- oh yeah. Uh, graphics. Let's try very low. See if that helps. Set 1080p again. What? What the hell? I have a feeling that's just- bogus because i mean it can't be a 1080p if it's in a window right and it's in a wait did that apply no i guess not oops all right uh does it still say yeah it just that must be a bug it just goes back to 1080p every time all right this seems a little better on very low Still kind of, uh, still a little wobbly. Oh, boss time. Okay. Anywhere else I need to go? Yeah. Well, all my mana reserves are full. I might as well go ahead and deal with the boss now. No reason not to. Regulus, the Predator King. So, uh, I have a copy of the book, The Little Prince, in Latin, for some reason. I don't know, I thought getting it would be a cool thing to have. And the title of the book in Latin is Regulus. So, uh, I, I guess this guy, shit, this guy is the little prince. Or girl. Well, it's a prince, I guess it's probably a guy. Oh god. I hate those birds that spit acid at you, but I have a nice big room to move around in, and they seem to be pretty easy to avoid. So one of the cool things about this game is that they're kind of patching new stuff in all the time. Like there was an update just the other day that added. Uh, they said 10% more more new room types. 
So uh, th this game is is out. It's not an early access or anything, but uh, the developers are very actively supporting it, which is pretty cool. Nice. Oh, yeah, what's up, Lord Tamar? <laughs> yeah, I can smash through barrel just by running through them. Well, you know, that's that's how you roll when you're a wizard. Some games need to restart to change the resolution. Yeah, that's true. Um, but I mean, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be in. It shouldn't say 1080p at all. It's in a window. I don't understand how that works. But oh well. Oh god. <laughs> how do you like those reflexes? Smashy, smashy. I mean, in the fiction of this game. The Ziggurat is basically created just to test wizards. You know, once once a wizard passes the test, they become like a, a full fledged wizard, I guess, as opposed to an apprentice or a, a novice or whatever else the character class is. So those books can't be anything important, or else they wouldn't put them there. Oh hey, I can test my uh, my carrot avoidance theory. Gonna hit me? Nope. I can just kind of hang out up here. That's awesome. Also, Carrot Avoidance Theory would be a pretty good name for a band. Oh, I, I don't really have a good shot at the ones that are right up next to the wall, though. Maybe, uh... Boom! Oh, I hit myself with that one. Wow. Started a nice little fire. Oh god. Oh, hey. Got a Chivo. Some hot chivos on this stream. What was that one? Kill 5,000 enemies. Nice. Pretty sure that that unlocks a character as well. Uh, there is an endless mode cistern. I'm playing on normal. On normal, there are only five levels to the dungeon. There's also a hard mode, and I don't know how many levels that one has. This is only wizard practice. Yeah, basically, McGack. I mean, it's not practice. It's a... Uh, basically... See, this is what this is what you don't see in Harry Potter. When you're a wizard, this is your final exam for wizarding school. All right, this looks like the only obelisk, which I hope that's the case. God, I hate these flying electricity things. Pretty sure that's the cano canonical name for them flying electricity things. Oh wait, there might be another obelisk. Shit. Jesus Christ. So much fire and electricity. What is this, a fantasy dungeon? You're not supposed to have fire and electricity. Jesus Christ, okay. Alright, I need to remember to pick up all the stuff that these things drop, because they drop quite a bit. Okay, there is another one. Damn. Oh, here we go. Wrecking Ball. Regain health by breaking things. Health potions grant double health when your maximum is down by 20. Hmm. I don't know. Double health is pretty nice. But I have all those points in, in Druid, so... My health potions are already pretty good. I, I don't like the idea of, uh, of reducing my maximum health. I wish I knew if this is actually effective, getting up on it and hitting it with mold. I mean, it looks pretty effective, but much harder to dodge enemies when you can't see them. Jesus Christ. So many things! Uh, hey, what's up, Schizo? 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 How's it going? Alright, you guys come over here. Well, unfortunately, I can only kite the flying enemies. I, pro I probably won't be able to kite the uh, the golem thing that far. But it's, it's okay. I just need to make a little bit of room for myself. Shit, shit.
This is one of the elite enemies. You can tell by the uh, the blue glow. I mean, those things are already electric, so I guess the elite versions are more electric. Double the electricity. Oh wait, do they just glow like that when they're about to attack? I don't know, it looked like that other one had a permanent glow to it. God, the range on that thing is enormous. And it creates a fire. It's just a bad time all around. Oh, that was the last guy. I thought there would end up being more. Oh, it's going pretty well. This is my first stream in a month. My last stream was the Apple II stream exactly one month ago. I hate to, uh... I hate to stream so infrequently, but this is the busiest time of the year at work for me, so I've been pulling a lot of extra hours and haven't had a whole lot of time to stream recently. But hopefully after April, things should get back to normal. Should go back to doing a few streams a month or possibly some LP or something. Yeah, I definitely recommend playing it if she has it, Lord Tamar. This game's really cool. Especially if you like- oh my god. I forgot not to walk into barrels. Especially if you like uh, old school shooters, uh, this is one of the best. Like in the genre of games that this belongs in, the procedural death labyrinth or the action roguelike or whatever you want to call it, this has become one of my favorite. Like, it's, it's Splunky, Binding of Isaac, Rogue Legacy, and this are probably my top four right now. Because I love games like this, like, like even non-roguelikes, non-RPGs. Like, I love the old school style of shooter, and uh, this is a very good one of those as well. Like, even if it didn't have the character progression and, you know, the perks and all that, this would still be a really great game. I mean, yeah, it's simple. It might not have, you know, all of the, oh god. It might not have all of the bells and whistles that modern shooters have, but, uh, but this is the kind of shooter that I like. And I was kind of sad, oh shit, I just lost a health potion, oh well. I was kind of sad when, uh, when that style of shooter kind of became less popular. I mean, I also really love, like, the Half-Life games, uh, I don't like games where you have a gun and you have to press a button to aim down the sights and then after you do that, that's how you aim. Like I, I like games where there's a crosshair, you point your crosshair at what you want to die and then it dies. And that's what this is. I also don't like multiplayer shooters which is where kind of the focus has been the past few years. I mean I like Quick Live okay. But uh, I hardly ever play it just because it's competitive and I don't have much fun with competitive games. Well, I don't have much fun with competitive games when I'm playing with people I don't know. Like if I'm just jumping into a game of Quick Live, it's not uh, it's not a fun experience for me usually. It's a pity that I never got hooked on FTL. Yeah, I liked FTL. Boss. Don't get me wrong, I, I had fun playing it, and I had fun streaming it blind for people. Just, I don't know, it just never quite quite got its hooks into me the same way the other games. I mean, I like the action roguelike element. You know, I like, you know, the one thing those games all have in common is they all have really good action. Well, the Binding of Isaac, well, now that Rebirth's out, the action in, in Binding of Isaac is pretty good, but, uh, yeah, Splunky, this, and Rogue Legacy all have really nice feeling action, which is the one thing that FTL does not have. Oh, it's another challenge room. Okay. This one's actually one of the easier ones. Uh, I should not say that because I'm sure, now that I did, I will fail spectacularly. But, uh... Oh god. Alright. Uh, this way, right? Yeah, I think. 
So you can you can land on the coal when it's not flaming like that. Oh god, this is the worst part. Oh. Okay. Woo! Flawless victory. Oh, finally got an amulet. Creates a cloud that poisons your enemies. Battlefield 2 was the last shooter where it completely got me hooked. Yeah, I was never into the Battlefield games. Because, again, big multiplayer component. And what's this? Ooh. I've never had this thing before. Frostbow. It's a great play on words. Uh, let's see. Shoots a sharp ice bolt that can freeze enemies. That sounds okay. I mean, I do like the the fire grenade, but uh, I think I'll try this out since I've never never gotten it before. What's the all fire do? Oh, just three three bolts instead of one. Eh. I've heard good things about Killing Floor, Magak. I've never heard of our darker purpose. Alright, anything else on this level? No. I already killed the boss, right? Yeah. So. Also, I already found the secret, so I don't know why I was looking around for more secrets. I do that in the Binding of Isaac all the time, too. Forget that I found the secret room and waste bombs trying to find one that's not going to be there. I have to say, having level 5 of thick skin rules. My health would be much lower if I didn't have that. Yeah, like, I was always really intrigued by the concept of a game where a lot of people have to work together as a team. Like, I I'm really interested in, like, Dota and League of Legends. Like, that aspect of it seems really cool to me. But, uh... But I suck at video games too much to actually play them. That's the problem. I don't want to make a bunch of people mad at me. But yeah, I mean, that aspect of Battlefield, the Battlefield games look pretty cool. Alright, floor four. Man, I spent a lot of time on that last floor. Magma rifle. I like this thing a lot. Basically just a uh, rocket launcher. That can fire four rockets instead of one. But uh, I'm still going to stick with the frostbow just because I've never used it. And some some of this stuff was kind of gross, grody, at very low quality. Oh god. I need to show off my amulet too. That's probably not going to actually hurt any of them because... Jesus Christ! Where the hell did all these guys come from? I guess they spawned in and, and I didn't notice. Crap. See, that that's the thing that, uh, that bums me out when a bunch of stuff spawns in and I start getting attacked from behind. Limited invulnerability each time you pick up a knowledge gem. Wow, that sounds amazing. I want to take that. wonder how limited it is. Oh. <laughs> it popped off for like a split second there. Invincible. Bah. But, it makes it a lot easier to run in and pick up the knowledge gems. Because if there's a, like a huge cluster of them, then you can probably keep your invincibility long enough to, to at least get out of there. I haven't played since the start of the year. Has it changed much? Well, I, I just picked it up a, about a week ago, Gizzo, so I, I couldn't tell you. I mean, just reading through the uh, the reviews, it does seem like there's been quite a, quite a bit of uh, change since it was in early access. Like, there are definitely some, some like, negative reviews where the person, uh, where the person edited it, edit, edited the review to say they added a bunch of stuff and it's cool now. Or there at least there, there's at least one review like that. Maybe not a bunch. Man, imagine level five. 
of the uh, limited invulnerability thing. That'd be awesome. I bet I bet that's a rare perk. Actually, I, I don't know if there's any if there's any like frequency or anything like that associated with the perks. I mean, it might just be completely random every time. You have an equally equally high chance of getting any perk. I'm not sure. Wow, that poison amulet recharges really fast. The am the amulets recharge when you kill enemies. So, oh, secret. Always happy to have another level of Druid. Aim training game released on 2011. Our first approach to an FPS. We couldn't finish an entire game, so we did something simple but well done. Sales were pretty good, and we re released a sequel a year later. Hey, I actually read the whole thing. Yeah, I've never heard of any of the other games this company made. But, uh, if they're anything like this, then, uh, they're probably pretty cool. I think the rarer or stronger perks have a higher chance to proc at higher levels. At least it felt like when I played. Yeah, that would make sense. I mean, I wonder how the endless mode... Like, I mean, eventually, if you're playing on endless, you'll reach a point where you have all of, all of the perks. And all of, all of the ones that can level up are maxed out to the highest level. So, I wonder, like... wonder if it does anything to, like, compensate for that. Actually, I looked at the high score list for Endless Mode, and it looked like the highest score on the list, or the highest level on the list, oh god, Skeleton Shaman, I hate this guy. He summons skeletons. And they fire those those really fast red projectiles. But yeah, it looked like... Shit! Shit! What the f... Oh my god. No. I can't see my keyboard, so I, I kind of have to just stab at the numbers blindly until I uh, until I get the weapon I want. Oh my god! How the hell am I supposed to dodge that? That's absurd. Oh god, there's another one. Or wait, I, I think the thing throwing the red projectiles was something different. Oh my god, I took so much damage. Oh man, there's like gravity on the projectile. That sucks. I thought it was just going to be a straight shot. Like most crossbows in video games are. Oh man, those are summons. There must be another, uh... Yep, there's another skeleton shaman. Shit. Shit! Oh, no potions. I'm not sure if summoned enemies can drop potions or if they can just drop mana. It seems like they just they just drop mana. Yeah, they get pretty shrekt. I don't like my weapon loadout. I mean, this is probably my least favorite of the books. The staff is kind of underwhelming, and this crossbow isn't as cool as I thought it would be. I mean, what's that? I want to be able to aim at an enemy and shoot it. I don't want freaking gravity on my shot. It's lame. Well, let's hope, uh, hope I get a lot of potion drops. I like the big rooms. A lot of room to move around in. Also, a lot of room to lag my computer. Man, I really need a better computer. This is a shame. I, sh I should be able to play this game at 720p and stream it well, on, on very low settings without this much freaking... Fra without this many frame drops. 
I mean, if I if, if I wasn't streaming, this would be absolutely fine right now. Shit. I guess, uh... I guess that should be my next goal, to buy a new computer. Or, buy a second computer that's just basically a streaming box. Might be able to do that less expensively than actually building a full-fledged new computer. I mean, it's fortunate that I happen to, to like 2D games more than 3D games in general because uh, because I can stream those with no issues at all. Uh, unless they're really poorly optimized or something. Boy, these things sure aren't dropping a lot of potions. Hmm. Well, these would both be pretty good. Specs on my current PC. Uh, it's not great. I don't even remember what video card I have, but it's a few years old. I have an i5 Intel uh, processor. I have 16 gigs of RAM, but uh, that doesn't seem to be the bottleneck in my case. I definitely need a faster processor and either a better video card or another video card. I think I'm going to get Wrecking Ball. I, I bet there's a bunch of stuff I can break that I just haven't been paying attention to. Like You can break these if you hit them from the right angle. I got two, two hit points back from that. I mean, my video card isn't bad. I can play most new games. Well, that's not true. I can play most games that are a couple years old without too many issues, but, uh... I, I think my processor is my bottleneck, to be honest. Oh god! Well, that's why you don't just blindly walk into rooms. Shit! Another one? Really? <sighs> A bunch of books in one of the hallways, yeah. I, I think I did pass that up. Oh god, it's an obelisk. Also a really weird layout on this room. Oh god. Oh, I see. I have to go like... Okay. Do I actually have a safe angle on this thing? Looks like it. I mean, Wrecking Ball can be pretty damn good at higher levels. Because... In some rooms, there's a lot of stuff you can break. If you get five hit points back every time you break something, then... A good value. Alright. See? My health is good again. I'm awesome. Maybe I should have gotten Druid instead of Wrecking Ball. But I felt like potions weren't just weren't dropping that often. Where's the other obelisk? I haven't seen it. Uh shit. God. Oh wait, more potions. Must be up here. God, would you freaking move? Wow. Where the hell is it? Shit. 
shit. Oh my god! How accurate can these people be? I'm freaking running all over the place. <sighs> I have no idea where the other Opelisk is. I know someone said something in chat, but... You'll have to wait a minute for me to be able to see it. Oh, shit. Alright, well let's take care of this guy. Because... God, I don't want to have to deal with him breathing down my neck while I try to destroy this thing. If you're going to have an obelisk room, it's good to have one where there are no, where there are no flying enemies. So you, you can kind of hide and just, just take care of them. Alright, see you later, Koss. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah, the obelisks do drop quite a bit of loot, but but it doesn't really make up for the loot you lose that doesn't get dropped by the enemies. Yeah, I'm glad my wand is so good. These weapons I have leave a lot to be desired. Potions! Well, okay. I, uh, I guess they do drop loot, they just don't drop experience points. And if you're watching this later on YouTube, Koss, sorry, I probably didn't say goodbye until after you already left. And some of these enemies seem to be able to compensate pretty well for your circle strafing. Like with those fire breathers. I was trying to circle strafe my way around them and they seem to adjust their aim on the fly to hit me. Uh, what was coming from this alien? Sorry, sorry Schizo. Sorry, just making sure I didn't miss anything in chat. Not a lot of breakable stuff. Oh god, it's those things. Shit. Alright. Gotta do something to these guys. Maybe, uh... Maybe I can kind of stun lock them so they can't throw anything at me. I guess the damage on this crossbow isn't that bad. It just, oh god. S splitting. It just sucked that, uh, that I couldn't hit that guy from a far away away, but if I can get close enough to the enemies and not die, that's pretty good. But I quickly ran out of mana anyway, so, oh well. Damn it, I should have popped my poison amulet while I was in the middle of all those enemies. I keep reading about that thing. Potion! Yes! Oh, breakable stuff. Oh wait, I shouldn't walk into it. Also, if an enemy breaks an object in the room, it still counts for your wrecking ball perk, which is pretty nice. God, I hate the ones that split. So obnoxious. And the yellow slimes that split off don't don't even drop anything. Potion! Nice, full health. Seems like I haven't leveled up in quite a while. There's a perk that makes it so... Gems give you more experience. In fact, I got one of them from the, uh, the shrine thing. Oh, okay. Thanks for the, uh, the clarification. Have I found? Yeah, I found the secret. Alright, well, I came back from, uh, not having very much health at all to having full health. I feel pretty good about that.
even d despite the horrible frame rate I'm getting. Maybe I should try playing in uh, an even smaller window. I mean, that's what I had to do. Shit. When I first started recording LPs. Because my computer was so old and so... So not good. I basically had to... Uh, because all, all I recorded at that point were emulators. I basically... Shit. I had to drop the emula emulator down to... Uh, 320 by 240 and then I would just lower the resolution of my monitor so the window was big enough for me to see it maybe maybe I should do that here oh my god crossbow potion I mean the absolute worst is when you have an obelisk room and enemies that summon other enemies. Because you just have so much shit you have to worry about. It's unbelievable. God, the drop on that crossbow. You have to be so close to hit anything with that crossbow. Alright, focusing too much on enemies, dude. Take out the obelisk. Just dodge and take out the obelisk. Your health is still good. Don't have to worry that much. Alright, level 13. Nice. Encounter treasure rooms more frequently. The flying skulls, yeah, they suck. I mean, flying skulls, no matter what game they're in, are pretty much always the worst. I mean, there's only one level of the, the dungeon left after this, so curiosity might not be that useful. If I got this early on, that probably would have been cooler, but uh. I'll take another level of, uh, shit, 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 oh my god, of telekinetic. How, oh my god, these things. Oh, shit, potions. Gotta get, gotta get, okay. Alright, now my health is full. I thought, oh wait. I got, I got more health for leveling up, that's right. Shit. Stop it. Stop throwing skulls at me. I already have one. I don't need another one. I appreciate it, though. Well, it would help if I could actually hit with this thing. No. See if I can poison these things. Probably not because they're not on the ground. Yeah, very limited usefulness on the crossbow. If you can actually hit with it, it's pretty good. But good luck hitting anyth anything with it without getting so close to it, you can see see the back of its see the back of its teeth. <sighs> well, that could have. Gone worse, could have gone better. God, this level is so big. Hey, there's some breakables. Wow, more skeleton shamans. How did you know? Exactly what I wanted. Shit, should have popped my amulet. Oh well. I mean, it recharges so frequently, I should be popping it all the time. I just never think to. I wish it would just automatically use itself when it reached 100%. It'd probably be... I mean, it would probably work in most situations. God, I took a lot of damage just now. Shit. Because I was trying to kill that freaking skeleton lord. And I had shit flying at me from everywhere. But I was fixated on killing the skeleton lord.
This is one of those games where, uh, where it's a little hard to talk. Because there's just so much shit you have to worry about. Oh, also, uh, Super House of Dead Ninjas, I forgot to mention. It's another one of my favorite procedural death labyrinths. It's a really good one. I just thought of that game because uh, I can't talk at all while, while I play Super House of Dead Ninjas. Cause it's, just, it's just so freaking fast and frenetic and you barely get a moment to catch your breath. I have to say I'm doing pretty well for having just such a crappy weapons loadout. God, this frame rate is so bad. If I, if I stream this again, I'm gonna have to do it in a smaller window. Hey! Oh. <clears throat> what can you tell me about those imposing flags present in every field of battle, swinging to the rhythm of adrenaline and magic? They aren't of much help since they don't appear to distract the evil creatures even a, l a little, but it's amusing to see how they fall to the ground because of a misplaced shot. I don't know what this is talking about. I, I haven't seen any flags like that. But, uh... But hey, I'll knock down some of your books. This was a very nice room. I got some free experience. And I got to destroy a bunch of shit. And now my health is almost full again. Yay. Also, the books aren't trapped, so you can just walk into them. You don't have to worry about them spilling acid on you. Full health. Okay, I'm glad I took Wrecking Ball now. Oh god! <laughs> uh, let's try the other way. The way it doesn't have the spinning blade column of death. Alright, we got some banshees. Oh, I, I really love this room layout because you, you have kind of a, a narrow, like, uh, bottleneck that you can kind of kite the enemies into and ma makes them a little easier to deal with. It's like when you're playing a traditional roguelike and you can just stand in the door and kind of deal with the enemies as they come to you one by one instead of having to deal with with them surrounding you. Of course you, you do still have to watch out for enemies spawning in behind you but which happens occasionally but still it's a very very nice level layout. I almost wish the books randomly exploded. <laughs> yeah. Restores half your mass health points. Wow. Where where are you when I actually need you, White Orb? You only show you only show up when I have full health. All right, level five druid. Of course, if possible, it's best to avoid the perks that just give you a one-time bonus, unless you really desperately need them. Because obviously it's better to pick the perk that will help you out in the long run instead of just giving you a short term benefit. I mean maybe the books do randomly explode when you play on hard. In fact I'd be disappointed if they don't. Alright so nothing else to do up there which means I'm going to have to go through the blade column room again. But now that I'm actually paying attention this room shouldn't be an issue. Alright so it was that way and then that way. So I want to go, yeah, I want to get to the other, well, and hide out in this cranny. That'll help. Yeah, there we go. This is how you deal with traps. Alright, uh, go south. Or down, whatever direction is represented by down on the map. Which I'm assuming it's south, but you never know. Oh wait, I should save these for when I need more health. Unless the enemy just kind of pop in and blow up the barrels on the way. I really don't like these things. 
I don't like anything that that leaves a uh, a spot in the room where you can't go, like the acid or the fire, because it's so freaking hard to to move around shit as it is. Right, grab him! <laughs> oh god! I thought I was about to fall there. I, I didn't realize there was a uh, chain. Are these things seeking me? That's horse shit. A seeking projectile that I can destroy? They sure are. Wow, that's horse shit. I thought the only thing that uh, the fire to seeking projectile was the uh, fungus thing. And that was okay because I can blow them up. I bet this would be a good enemy to freeze. If I can get the right weapon out. Wow, that is such horseshit. In harder difficulties, the enemies do more than just get more stats. Yeah? I'm not sure if that's the case with this game or not. Since, like I said, I've only played on normal so far. Oh, chalice room, nice. Well, got a bunch of stuff for me to break. Feel like I should be playing some Limp Biscuit in the background. Oh yeah, you can also break these tombstones. No big deal. You know, just desecrating a bunch of, bunch of graves. No biggie. 41 health, yeah, why not? Reduced alchemy mana usage, nice. max health is increased. It's superstition, but I always try to offer something, like offer health or mana or both before I do this one. Because I feel like if I go straight for the altar where, where you don't have to give anything, it, it's going to be more likely to punish me. I have nothing to base that on. It's just a gut feeling. I've gotten almost nothing but gifts from these this run. It's pretty nice. Oh yeah, that's right. I just gave up a shitload of health. I was, I was like, why is my health so low? I was like, oh yeah. But there's a bunch of barrels back here that I didn't break as well. Uh, I think it was this room. Or maybe I, maybe I already broke them. I forget. Yeah, I probably did. Oh well. Oh, here's some. Kind of weird how like the lighting will take a second to catch up. Like, dashing from, from one room to another. It's like, oh, this room's supposed to be red. Not yellow. Oh, nice. Being very generous with the breakables. It's too bad I, on I only have two levels of Wrecking Ball. Oh, there's a portal key finally. I keep looking for secrets and I already freaking found it. Oh, I guess I already found the boss room. Oh yeah, I found that early because it's right right off of the uh, the entrance. Well, I'm not going to have full mana when I fight the boss, but I'm, I'm at least going to have close to full health. Alright, not the final boss yet. So get my staff out, since that's the, the only weapon I have mana for. Even though it kind of sucks, I'm probably just better off using my wand. I think this is the most health I've ever had on a single run. Ignis the Firemonger. This guy's pretty cool. Uh, that's pretty decent damage, I guess. God, there's gonna be a shitload of these these electricity things to deal with, though. I tend to kind of brute force my way through bosses because, uh, I mean, like I said, my philosophy is. Oh my god, there's so much shit on the ground. 
my philosophy is there's so much shit on the ground. No, my philosophy is killing minions in these encounters is just a waste of time. Because they're just going to spawn spawn in just as fast as you can kill them, I assume. Very well. It's dropping a bunch of potions. So that's nice. Almost 200 health. Wow. Tried any of the other classes? Yeah, I've, I've tried quite a few of them. Um, I really like the Bard. She starts with some amazing stuff, but her health is so low, I, I haven't been able to get that far with her. And same with the, uh, is it the Thief, I think? Or possibly the Rogue, I forget. Same deal. Really awesome starting abilities, really crappy health. And I'm the kind of player who needs a lot of health. Hey, I broke a million points. Nice. Oh, and also the Acrobat. My, my two favorite classes are uh, the Novice and the Acrobat. Because the Acrobat starts with 100 health. Bloodlust Needles. This, this is a new one. I haven't gotten that yet. My favorite spell book is the, uh, the one where you throw a, a flaming, screaming skull at your enemies. Because I, I like to fight fire with fire. Alright, no secrets? No. Okay. And hack slash loot, desecrating tombs can spawn enemies. Yeah, that's the way it is in Pixel Dungeon as well. There are tombs you can desecrate, but uh... Oh, what's that? That's cool. Wow. That seems nice. They listened to my complaints about my weapons and gave me a good one. Wow, they just go straight straight towards the enemy. No fooling around. That's awesome. This weapon rules. Of course my mana still isn't great, but still, I'm just I'm just happy I have a weapon that's better than my freaking wand. you Ooh, more war more war cry definitely recovering health at the beginning of every encounter is amazing I'm not sure if I'd be able to play this game in a lower resolution to be honest just because there's so much shit you have to keep your eye on Having less less screen real estate seems like it would be a real bummer. I wonder how far the effective range on these needles is. Like, can I just stand back here? It sure looks like it. Can I aim, like, way over here? Yeah. Wow. That is freaking cool. I know what I'm going to use against the boss. Yeah, the thing the summoners were using. Suffers at close range. Yeah, I can see that. But still... Way better than my other weapons. Hey, screw you. Man, this is too nice. I want to overuse this and run out of mana and be really sad when it happens. Shit! I wish I had the perk where it doesn't matter what kind of mana I pick up. God! Jesus, where did you come from? Oh my god! They must. They had to have just spawn in. That sucks. I did not hear them spawn in at all. I don't know, they still seem pretty good at close range. I had to go shitload of damage. Oh, it's the boss room. By the way, I don't think I've... This is what happens if you go into the boss room without the portal key. It shows you a ghostly image of the portal key.
Quad damage for everyone. Oh my god. That sounds potentially unpleasant. Oh. I knew it. I love being able to go after these mana gems and not really having to worry that much about getting hit though. That's an awesome ability. Hi secret. I wonder if that counts as breaking an item. I, I didn't pay attention to my health. Oh, it's that perk it keeps trying to give me. Well, I mean, I'll take it for free. Endless Runner released on 2010. Its strong points were a good difficulty curve and real-time scoreboards. It was our first true commercial success. Avatar Ninja. I guess it's like one of those Xbox Live Avatar games. I never, I never played any of those. I hate these things with the fiery passion. No pun intended, except I totally intended it. Oh god, oh god. I think I should get more health for breaking these ginormous columns. I mean, that's a big item to break and still only get two health back. I mean, give me some credit. It's not every day you knock down a gigantic stone pillar. Well, I guess some people do that every day. I'm not one to judge. Die, 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 die. I love the spell book. You can just kind of hide behind cover and just aim in, in the general vicinity of enemies and they just die. Except there's so much stuff on the screen. <laughs> I'm gonna run out of mana far before I kill, all, long before I kill all of them. Trying to pick up some of this mana before it disappears. This staff would probably be, be pretty good if I had some perks that increased my staff fire rate. Right? Sweet. Reduces mana uses for spells. That sounds nice. Increased chance of getting mana gems over health potions and increased drop rate. I guess that means you get them you get mana more frequently than health. I don't know. I think I'm more of a spell proficiency. Felt like a good portion of their previous games were a bit shovel wary. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what makes this game that much more intriguing. Cause I mean none of their older games sound like anything like this at all. Like you said, they all sound pretty shovel wary, so this game is a pleasant surprise. I could go on ahead and... Oh, you know, I don't have the, sh the portal key yet. Never mind. I thought I already got it, but I did not. I'm going to say I could go on ahead and fight the boss, since my mana reserves are all pretty high. But, uh... I should probably, I should probably max out my spellbook mana at least before I fight the boss. Which is going to be difficult, because that means I'm going to have to not use it all the time. This is going to be the final boss too, which I have yet to beat, so if I beat the final boss during the stream, that'll be a first for me.
I'm not going to get my hopes up. My, uh, my character loadout and stuff is much worse than my character loadout during my previous final boss attempts. I mean, I don't want to say their previous games are shovelware because I haven't played them yet. They might be awesome. But uh, they do sound awful shovelware-y. Not saying they were, just saying going by the title and the description, that's the impression I get. Oh yeah. Totally out of mana for that. Probably kill the skeletons first, since they're the more immediate threat. Although the freaking splash damage on these things is ridiculous. I feel like I'm miles away from the explosion uh, and I'm still getting hit. Oh, great, more of these guys. The skeleton lords are definitely the main threat. I wish the uh, poison ring extended vertically as well as horizontally. That would be pretty nice. Shit. Do do do. Okay. Oh, my spellbook man is full. Oh, hey, treasure. Wow, I'm getting way fewer trapped treasure chests than I usually get. Yes, that's what I need. More spell mana. Sweet. Oh wait, I should save those. Instead of blowing them up. Yeah, uh, before I started streaming, it seemed like at least 75% of the time, those boxes, like the ones I just opened, would spawn a bunch of enemies in. Oh, another one of these. Nice. I can use the health thing and then get most of my health back by breaking all this stuff. It's a good strategy. Attack rate, nice. Look at that. Yeah. Wait, are these the flag things he was talking about? Because they don't fall or anything. Map revealed for this floor. Oh, cool. I can go straight to the portal key if I want. IRL explosions would be quite dangerous, even even from quite a distance. The sound alone. Yeah, that's true. I, I guess I shouldn't complain too much. Your attack rate increases, but you deal less damage. Ah, man, what's the point? I mean, it's very impressive looking. It's my, uh, it's my machine gun sound effect. Don't mind me. Just desecrating some graves. I wonder if those are the graves of previous people who failed in the ziggurat. That would be poetic justice. Oh, well, the portal key's right here. Wait. Oh, I guess it doesn't show where the actual doors are, it just shows where the rooms are. Interesting. I do want to get that scroll. Which means I have to go through that trap room. But the uh, the yellow trap rooms usually aren't bad. Wait, oh yeah, that's the spell book I dropped. It's the red trap rooms that are the real pains in the tookus. But you don't have to do those. Those are always optional. They just give you a nice nice present at the end if you can succeed. Those graves contain the previous adventurers who buried them. That's a good question. Maybe there's a gravedigger class that I just haven't unlocked yet. For many millennia, this tuber of divine origins was considered a basic plant in the production of po 
potions and curative essences. Nowadays, thanks to its easy cultivation and cooking by Magic Wand, it has become the favorite food of wizards stranded in the ziggurat. Thanks to their sustenance, they can calm the roars of their stomachs one more day. I haven't found any potatoes. That was a complete fabrication. Alright. Uh, I should probably at least try to level up one more time before I fight the boss. There's probably enough experience in these rooms that I can pull that off. Oh, great. So what is that? Is that four obelisks or just three? I couldn't tell if that was a third. I need to kill these things. I couldn't tell if that was a third of the obelisk's health or a quarter. I wonder if poison does anything to these. Let's try it. I doubt it, but uh, I can create a nice little barrier between me and the enemies. A barrier of death. I hate obelisk rooms. They're the worst. Uh, okay, just one more, so there were only the three. That's good. I see you throwing those purple skulls at me. I have more important shit to do. Knowledge gems give you more experience. That would have been a good one to have way earlier. Grave robber class. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Being able to dig up the graves and get get stuff from them. I guess I could I'll get Scholar, since, I mean, I'm doing fine with the telekinesis I already have. I mean, I'm not sure if it'll help me at this stage of the dungeon, but, uh, might as well. Eat poison and deal a bunch of damage to me. I wanted you to do that. It was part of my strategy. I like the staff better with the faster fire rate. I mean, I might as well well clear out the rest of the rooms, right? Try to get as many levels, as many perks as possible before I fight the final boss. I mean, I'm doing an okay job as- Of course! Great! Thank you! The game's punishing me for my- for my hubris, it always happens. It happens in Splunky, it happens in the Binding of Isaac, it's happening here. You're surviving pretty well. Well, we can't have you saying stuff like that. We have to give you two obelisk rooms in a row. That'll knock you down a peg. That's the main reason. I decided to clear out the dungeon first before I fought the final boss is because I'm really scared of the final boss and I'm, I want to stall, put off fighting him for as long as possible. It's a very scary final boss. I mean, it's not him, it's the millions and millions of enemies that the final boss summons. I mean, if it was just him wouldn't be a challenge at all. It's like the final boss of Doom 2, sort of, where the boss itself isn't really a thing. You just have to, uh, you just have to deal with the billions of things swarming you while you try to fight it. Or you could just cheat and clip through the, uh, the, the icon of sin and just shoot rockets at John Ramirez, John Ramirez's head like everyone did.
I haven't been using my crossbow much because I have to be super close to stuff to get any any use out of it. Also, having a faster fire rate on this thing doesn't really help since your shots have to be so so precise if you want to hit. I wonder if I can freeze those things while they're uh, while they're closed. Didn't look like it. There's no no clip mode in this game, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly, Schizo. It's the combination of the crossbow arc and the uh, the slowness of the projectile. It's a real bummer. I mean, the uh, the magma rifle is kind of the same way, but at least that blows up. It has splash damage. Oh god. I do not like those things one bit. That attack is not fair except when I'm using it. Then it's perfectly fair. But when the enemies use it, it's the most unfair thing in the game. I do feel like a badass with how fast this wand is, though. Even if logically it's not doing more damage to them, it still feels good. It's kind of like in Rebirth, in Binding of Isaac Rebirth, the soy milk power up. Like, it sucks. But I still kind of like getting it just because I, I like shooting that many projectiles. Nice, another level. An amulet appears in your hands. Might be a more useful amulet than the one I have. I think I want to go with that. What I get? Oh, is that the re Yes, regeneration. I love that one. That's my favorite amulet. It does take quite a while to recharge, but... When it does recharge, it is extremely useful. By the way, you can play this game with a controller. Uh, I haven't done that, obviously, because it's a first-person shooter. Why would I play play it with a controller? But if that's your your preference does have that option and there is an auto aim option in the menu that you can enable and you can turn that on whether you're using a controller or not so I assume if I turn that on it would make this game quite a bit easier but uh, it would, I, I figure the auto aim thing would be almost necessary with if you're playing with a controller I did watch a video of this where someone was playing with a controller with auto aim turned on, and the auto aim seemed pretty significant. He was also playing on easy, so he was just kind of steamrolling through the game. Uh, who am I? Oh, yeah, it was the uh, giant bomb. Dot com. Quick look at this game that made me buy it. Yeah, I guess. I don't know how auto-aim would work with a crossbow. It probably wouldn't. But I mean, with the wand, it would be quite useful if the projectile was just... just sort of targeted the enemies. Alright, might as well go through that trap room, since it wasn't that big of a deal. Oh yeah, it's just, just this stuff. Pfft, that's barely even a trap. Come on. Staz plus 50% damage. Yes, sir. Oh, unfortunately, my staff mana was not not sufficient for this room. Why couldn't it have been uh, crossbow damage or weapon damage? 50% more. Oh well, I'm going to fight slimes. Oh man, I missed that experience. This is a good room to do it in. 
lots of uh, lots of stuff to move around. Unfortunately, they're dropping a bunch of experience that I'm just not going to be able to get because look at that bullshit. On a scale of one to bullshit, how many enemies are in this room? I'd say it's about bullshit minus one. I could use I could use my mana regen, but uh, I kind of like saving that for when I'm low on health. Because getting health back is usually more important. Wow, the increased fire rate on this thing sure makes it run out of mana more quickly. God, how many of these freaking things are there? Totally out of staff mana still. I really wish the yellow ones dropped experience instead of the green ones. But it's just so hard to get in there and grab the experience. Unless I kite them around, I guess. But by then, they'll probably already disappear. Wish I had that perk that makes the experience gym stay on the screen longer. Oh man, my wrist is starting to hurt. It's been in this position for too long. I'm gonna give myself carpal tunnel play in this game. I wanna grab that potion and this experience, but okay. I wish I had my poison amulet now. Run it in the middle of all these things and just let them slowly rot. Aw, oh, what's wrong, little guy? You stuck? Don't worry, I'll help you. Ah, oh, man. How long have I been playing? Uh, two hours and eight minutes. Which, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I... I, I play longer than that. It's just... Oh, hey, what's up, Galen? It's just the position that I have to sit in to talk into the microphone and play at the same time. It's just a little weird for the for the old wrist. And I mean, I'm on the last floor and I'm I'm almost I've almost done everything on this floor, so it'd just be silly to take a break now. But yeah, th this will probably be the only run of the night, unfortunately. Runs in this game take a pretty long time. Like even when I'm not streaming, uh they've they've taken like half an hour before half an hour. They've taken like an hour and a half before. You do have the option to save and quit, which is very, very nice. I always like it when procedural death labyrinths give you that option. Like they added in The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. I should probably just go on ahead and use my amulet. Because in the uh, in this next room, I'm going to kill enough enemies to recharge it again, probably. Yeah, I'm just gonna just wanna go ahead and pop it. Oh god, it's giving me shamans. Shit. Also, I have to say I really enjoy the the noise the carrots make when they die. It kinda reminds me of like the uh the Rayman Raving Rabbids, those things. Only not not as annoying. But it's a very satisfying uh, death noise. At least the shamans go down pretty quickly, but they're still hard to deal with because god they just fire so many projectiles and they summon so many enemies. Alright, there's still a shaman left. Where is it?
Oh, it's a, uh, it's an epic shaman as well, or whatever the term is in this game. Elite. Oh god. I saw some uh, blue mana over here, so... Wait, is there another shaman? Shit! I guess it spawned in. Yeah, see my uh, amulet already recharged. That's a pretty good recharge rate. Oh god, forgot about that attack. Don't want to get too close to these guys. Oh man. Something unnerving about carrots with teeth. I'd be unnerved by any vegetable with teeth. Can you imagine just biting into a baked potato and there are just teeth inside? Ugh. Alright, well, I've done li literally everything on this floor except fight the boss, so I guess I can't stall any longer. Just fair warning, this, m this might turn into a slideshow with all the stuff that's going to be on the screen. And as bad as my computer's performance has been so far... <sighs> okay, psych yourself up, Duke. What weapon do I want to go in with? I guess, uh, start off with the big guns. Examiner Cephas. This is my final exam. So those projectiles totally seek you out and they explode. You can blow them up, but uh, it's hard to blow up projectiles with any weapon other than the wand. Because it's hard to be that accurate. Like I said, I've never beaten Examiner Sivas before. So, if I do beat him, this will be a first. Oh god. I should probably stop talking and just fight. He's probably going to summon too many enemies t for this to be useful. Yeah, it would be cool if with this weapon the projectiles could like go through. Oh my god, there's so much shit. Okay, use my amulet. Yeah, I was really hoping the staff would be more like a real gun when I read the description. Yeah, he does that uh, that ground pound attack so fast. Your best bet is is to just get out of its range instead of trying to jump over it. No, uh, no experience gems dropping, so uh, no temporary invulnerability for this fight. Oh, this is full again. Nice. Where'd he go? Shit! Fuck! I don't know how- what you're supposed to do when those things start falling out of the sky. That's just absurd. And I'm expected to deal with that. No, no potions really dropping either. Did I get him? 
There might be another form. Oh, thank God. <sighs> the examiner, after witnessing with pride your mastery of the arcane ways, is ready to certify your work to the other members of the council. For that, he hands over the scroll sealed with golden wax that will allow you to exit the ziggurat. You'll have to read it in front of all the guild members to end this test. The Daedalon brothers await the return of the students with anticipation. Your silhouette is the first to appear through the portal, and everyone holds their breath with fascination and disconcert. The mere fact that someone gets out alive is crazy. I didn't read that. The time for silence has passed. The brothers lean over their seats, eager to hear your words. You clear your throat with unease. Now is the time. You slowly unroll the scroll and prepare to read its contents, and... Be sure to drink your oval tea. No. With a quavering voice, you begin to read the scroll. The ancient text trembles in your ears and comes to light before your dazed eyes, blazing red when pronounced. You feel a slight tingle. It feels good. You feel a rush of magic energy pass through you, healing your battered body and relieving your agitated mind with its radiant splendor. Suddenly, you feel your body weight disappear, becoming pure magic and diluted in the mystic tide forming part of it. Your chest beats intensely from the explosive rush of mana. You sense the powers inside you are now brighter, more clear. All the power of the Brotherhood is now flowing through your veins. When you finally open your eyes, your feet have come back to the ground and see the other brothers with their faces unmasked, celebrating your victory. You can be proud, young apprentice. You've made it. You are now a brother of Daedalon. Ziggurats. All right. Well, I feel pretty good about that. Man, that was intense. I, my health was so low towards the end. I feel pretty good about, about pulling that victory out. Especially live on Twitch for the first time. All right, see what I unlocked. Sorry, credits. I'm Ansi. You have won! Aw, didn't break two million. Oh well. Vampire! Well, that's almost like a gravedigger. Simon the Sorcerer. Minzy the Shaman. New game modes. Oh! Huh. Stat profic proficiency. Shoot magic projectiles in a circle pattern each time you pick up mana crystals. That sounds good. Chance of casting a stunning shockwave each time you're hit. Use the power of magic science to roast your enemies. Oh, it's like uh, like an electric zapper thing. <laughs> magic science. Instantly gets all drops in the room. Hey. That was a pretty good run. Let's see what this new game mode is all about. Normal, hard, endless. What's the new game mode? Is there like a different character card for it? Have I unlocked all the characters now? Nope. I still need to deal 35,000 damage with alchemic weapons. I'm pretty close. Yeah, I don't know what this other character mode is. Uh, I, I, I don't know what that is because these were all here before. Hmm. All, all these modes are here with the other characters. I don't know. Well, I beat it on normal. I still have hard and endless to deal with. See, see how much stuff I, uh, I still need to unlock. So here's all, all the uh, the perks. Oh yeah, see, still quite a few. All of these are locked. Yeah, I have a long way to go before I, before I'm done with this game. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so here's what I was what I was saying. Well, let's see what my uh, what my high score is as the novice, or how high in the list I am. Thirty-one, thirty-five. Not too bad. Uh, but on endless, oops. Oh wow. They've only made it up to oh wait, up to floor twelve as a sorcerer. That's weird. Maybe I was looking at level and not floor before. Alright, well what's the basic class? That's the uh the apprentice, right? 
Yeah, see, people have only made it up to floor 18. So I wonder... Yeah, their character level is much... Oh wait, level 101, or level... Yeah, level 101, floor 25. Maybe it really is in the list, maybe... Hmm, I don't know. That's crazy though. Level 101? That's insane. Alright, well, uh, this has been Ziggurat. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed it. I know I sure did. Sorry about the terrible frame rate. I'll, I'll try to... I'll, I'll experiment with different resolutions and stuff and see if there's anything I can do about that. But uh, it's been fun. Uh, this will go up on YouTube later for any of you who came in late. And uh, stay tuned for announcements of further streams. Bye, everyone.